How's it going everybody? In today's video, I'm going to show you footage from my trip yesterday to the Big Bad Wolf Book Fair in San Fernando. The book fair venue is 67 kilometers north of where I live in Metro Manila. My house is not far from the toll gate entrance, so it's actually not so challenging to head out of the city. The venue, Laos Group Event Center, is right off the expressway San Fernando exit, very easy to find. It took me only 1.5 hours to reach the venue. It's not overwhelmingly full of crowds like the past few Big Bad Wolf book fairs held in Metro Manila since it's out of town. I've never been to those events since I dislike crowds. It probably helped that I was there at 5.30pm on a random Thursday. There were already so many books on display outside the main event hall. The prices were so cheap and they didn't look at all worn or tattered. The cookbook section has this interesting Whiskey 101 box set with a hip flask. Price? 350 pesos or 7 US dollars. I knew it was a good sign when one of the first books that caught my eye was an Edwidge Danticat tome. If you're not familiar with her, she's this great writer who hails from Haiti. There were also a bunch of random boxed game sets like this juggling tutorial and some card games. They have an amazing selection of art and design hardcovers at great prices. Many are so new looking and shrink wrapped. Most are under 700 pesos, around 14 US dollars. I bought these next two books you see, the Damien Hirst Collection and the California Graphic Design Book. This is a long video, but I'm going to make it easy to navigate. You can check the video description for timestamps and the various themes I covered. I went through each aisle of the venue and I'll slow down in some of the more interesting covers. Like this Slaughter book, she's a pretty okay writer for The Atlantic, or The Revenant, the book the movie where Leo DiCaprio gets messed up by wolves is based on. I also pick up a few books and give my opinions on them. If you want to fast forward directly to those, check the timestamps. Feel free to fast forward the boring bits if you just want to see the lay of the land. Conversely, just pause when you see an interesting cover whose title you want to grab if I went through it too fast. They have a pretty decent selection of history books. I was tempted to get this naval aircraft of World Wars 1 and 2 book but I decided not to since I ended up getting a different warplane book. I picked up some guy's version of a short history of the Middle East. Let's see if it's any good. My favorite book on the Middle East is A Peace to End All Peace, The Fall of the Ottoman Empire and the Creation of the Modern Middle East by David Fromkin. So far, nothing else I've read in the region has topped it. Maybe this one will at least match it. I also got another short history book on the history of vice, how bad behavior built civilization. The next book I got is about Bangkok, one of my favorite cities in the world. Ooh, I was so tempted to get this brief history of the Age of Steam book, but I decided not to. I didn't want to hoard if I know I won't have enough time to read. There's this freaky looking illustrated history of torture from the Roman Empire to the War and Terror book. I got this book on the history of the quest for an absolute system of measurement. Looks exciting. There's a large section in various reference books. This book on the shallows, how the internet is changing the way we think, read, and remember is very good. I didn't get it because I've read it already. To recap, that's what the entrance of the outer area of the venue looks like, the non-air conditioned part. About to head in. This is their premium zone. There's some Tashin and Fiden published hardcovers. Like this cool Ali book. The cover has this iconic photo from his victory over Sonny Liston. The right side of the area, which you'll pass when you exit, has some souvenir buttons for sale. Check out this trio of Edward St. Aubin books. I love his stuff. He writes about misbehaving rich English people. Funnily enough, they put his books beside Crazy Rich Asians, which is about misbehaving rich Chinese Singaporeans. The shelf along the wall beside the entrance of the main events hall is full of graphic novels. So what's this Big Bad Wolf event? As I've mentioned, they've held book fairs in Metro Manila for the past few years, but I've never gone since it's always so jam-packed and I hate crowds. I only went to the San Fernando one since it's out of town, yet the travel time is probably just the same as going to the in-city events venue because of the traffic from my house. I'm gonna read the FAQs from their website verbatim. 
It all began with their first sale in 2009 at the Dataran Hamodal in Selangor, Malaysia. Since then, it has grown by leaps and bounds with howling successes in different countries such as Indonesia, Thailand, Myanmar, Taiwan, the UAE, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, South Korea, the Philippines, and many more to come. The Big Bad Wolf book sale is the biggest and most affordable book sale in the world, offering 50 to 90% discount on all books. Not everything here is gold. There's a lot of junk genre fiction, airport crime thriller type books. But if you keep your eyes peeled, you'll find a lot of hidden treasure. Actually, the organizers labeled some aisles of the slightly more worn but cheaper books as Treasure Island. I highly recommend Irvin Welsh. I haven't read Ecstasy, but I've read his other stuff. I love Granta. It's a great journal full of good short writing, mostly prose. The theme of this winter 2017 edition is Journeys. Roald Dahl has some freaky adult-themed books for those who only know him from his children's books. Oh, I don't know if your eyes caught it, but there's two different covers here for The 39 Steps, wildly considered to be one of the first modern detective novels. They have a good speculative fiction section too. I highly recommend Isaac Asimov's Foundation Trilogy. And of course, Philip K. Dick. His books foreshadowed a lot of our dystopic present. I don't know what a John Updike book is doing lost in the SF section though. Scored two great Cormac McCarthy books, I think he's one of the best writers of the modern era. To refresh your memory, he wrote No Country for Old Men, the book the movie was based on, and All the Pretty Horses. If you like spy novels and aren't stupid, you can't go wrong with John Le Carré. And oh wow, there's a five-pack of Patricia Highsmith books. I haven't read these, just The Talented Mr. Ripley and The Price of Salt. The latter is the book they based the movie Carol on, starring Kate Blanchett. There's an Ultimate Guide to Craft Gin box set, similar to the whiskey box set earlier, but no hip flask in this one. The next beverage-themed box set is this high tea one. There's sure a lot of unusual drinks-related books, if we can call them that here. There's an entire table of beauty, makeup, and fashion books. Lost among them are books in Gauguin and Bosch paintings. The Skull Poster book is so cool! I mentioned earlier that I didn't buy the Naval Aircraft of the World Wars 1 and 2 book anymore because I bought another warplane book. It's this one, the Combat Aircraft of the United States Air Force book. The cover also says it features rare photographs, and I'm a sucker for the marketing term rare. Just like it says in the train book I got, also featuring rare photographs. Haha. <laughs> There's a weird book on stuff white people like, apparently recycling, expensive sandwiches, and Che Guevara are among some of them. There's a well-stocked section in crafts and hobbies, lots of adult coloring books, and board and card games. Here we come to the end of our journey, the cashier. You have to bring your own tote bag so you don't have to pay for their plastic bags. And of course, you exit through the proverbial gift shop. Feel free to skip through the next 37 seconds, the 9 minute 10 second mark to 9.47 if you wish. Just shot some footage of my quick stop over at a rest stop for dinner before going home. I like the Filipino-themed decor of this restaurant. For dessert, I went next door to this shop known for good quality dairy products. I'd actually just tried their mochi ice cream four days before. The guy gave me a free sample of their carabao milk pastillas de leche. For this trip, I bought a liter of fresh carabao milk to bring home. Carabao is a type of water buffalo native to the Philippines. Here are the different books I bought and their corresponding prices. 20th century type. A paperback and typography cost 190 pesos, around 4 US dollars. It's new, still shrink wrapped. 
I'm going to put timestamps in the video description. If you want, you can skip ahead to the unboxing of the specific book you want to see, or just fast forward. This is a neat pop history book about the quest for an absolute system of measurement. Same price as the previous one, 190 pesos, around 4 US dollars. I also got a Snoopy comic. The strips are colored, also 190 pesos, around 4 US dollars. This is a Middle East primer. Let's see if it can match my favorite Middle East history book, A Peace to End All Peace, 230 pesos, around 5 US dollars. Also got a Dennis Lehane novel, A Cut Above Other Crime Writers, very literary, 90 pesos, around 2 US dollars. I got this great Damien Hirst hardcover compilation of some of his works. The cover design is so neat. It cost 480 pesos, a little under 10 US dollars. The next book is the most expensive of the bunch at 780 pesos, a little over 15 US dollars, but it's worth it since it's a thick Thames and Hudson published hardcover. New, shrink wrapped, and the design, printing, even the embossing of the spine is so nice. It's on California and the graphic design of that region spanning 50 years from 1936 to 1986. I love the romance of trains, so I couldn't resist this hardcover photo book on the evolution of rail travel. It was only 480 pesos, a little under 10 US dollars, a steal considering it's brand new. Just like this train book says, featuring rare photographs in the cover, this next book, Combat Aircraft of the United States Air Force, also markets itself as having rare photographs from wartime archives, which convinced me to pick it over a different warplane book I saw at the book fair, a naval aircraft from World War I and II. Scroll to the 2 minute 35 second mark of this video to see that cover. I'm a sucker for marketing that says rare. Haha. <laughs> this costs 290 pesos, around 6 US dollars. The next is a Jonathan Franzen biography of an Austrian thinker, The Krauss Project. No brainer at 230 pesos, around 5 US dollars. I love his novels like The Corrections and Freedom, but this will be the first time I read his nonfiction. I got an interesting seeming book on Bangkok history since this is one of my favorite cities in the world. Price 190 pesos, around 4 US dollars. Next up is Grantus Winter 2017 edition. Theme is Journeys. This is one of my favorite publications. It's a journal of great short writing, mostly prose. Also 190 pesos, around 4 US dollars. Got a fun seeming pop history book and a brief history of vice, how bad behavior built civilization. The cover is cute and there are funny illustrations inside. Price 230 pesos, around 5 US dollars. Lastly, I got two Cormac McCarthy novels for 190 pesos, around 4 US dollars each. Look at how shiny and nice they look despite the price. I feel as one of the heavyweights of American letters. As I mentioned earlier, he wrote No Country for Old Men, which the film was based on, and All the Pretty Horses. Alright everybody, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to thumb it up, comment, subscribe, and share, share this video with your friends. Thanks for watching. See you next video.